Hello, welcome to Joy Mount Presbyterian Church, wherever you are worshipping with us today. We wish you God's blessing and trust you are keeping safe and well. These lockdown and social distancing measures have proved really challenging for us as families, in our work situations, and also, of course, in our church life. I really hope you're managing these difficult and challenging times well. We all heard the update from our Northern Ireland executive at Stormont earlier in the week, in which we heard some of the relaxation of the current lockdown regulations have been introduced. In our church, we are now able to legally open the church for private prayer and hold in drive-in services. The Kirk Session at its last meeting on the 10th of May appointed a business commission whose purpose and function is to rule on various issues on behalf of Kirk Session. This was in line with the advice we received from Church House. The Business Commission met on Tuesday past and have decided not to open our church for private prayer or to hold drive-in services. We hold the view that this is unnecessary and would also be unwise to do so. We worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who is present everywhere and at all times, whose ear is always open to the cries of his people. When we come to our Father in and through the name of Jesus, he hears and answers whether we pray at home or out for a walk or wherever. We believe in the importance of private prayer and corporate prayer, but we do not believe that it is necessary, nor would it be helpful for you or indeed anyone to come to the church building to pray. We recognise and feel the grief of not being able to meet together on Sunday for worship, yet we hold the view that drive-in services would not in any way enhance or extend or indeed replace anything that we are presently doing as a church in lockdown. Kirk Session have no plans to open our church buildings for private prayer or to hold in drive-in services. Can I take this opportunity to thank everyone who is working behind the scenes to produce our virtual services, enabling us to remain a worshipping, teaching community of Christ's disciples. Kirk Session will be issuing guidance for our church and its organisations for the coming out of lockdown. We hope to have initial, an initial plan by the end of June, giving a, a possible way forward. The guidance we will produce will guide us through how we might minister and reach out during what is likely to be a long transition period. Please be patient. These things take time and there's much fluidity to deal with as well. I'm thankful to all of the staff, elders, committee and leaders in Joymount who are working tirelessly to ensure that our church family is held together. Can I appeal to the organisations, can I appeal to the leaders of the organisations to check with the church office before setting up anything new or moving towards the establishment of programmes? It is important that we maintain good lines of communication at this time. Please continue to pray for us as we seek to steer through these troubling times. I will be conducting the service this morning. Tonight, Robert McGee will conduct and preach at our evening service. And then on Tuesday, the Reverend David Bryce will lead our Bible study at 2pm. On Wednesday, the men meet at Hebrew at 10.30am and then the women meet for a coffee and chat at 3pm. On Thursday at 7.30pm we have unprecedented reflection. This week we look at the theme of refuge. Unprecedented is a short, sharp framework which allows participants to catch up with each other and reflect on what God is saying at this moment and respond with renewed faith in him, allowing us to follow in his ways. We take time together chat and learning and encouraging one another. It's a time for listening to your heart, to learn from God's word, grasping God's direction and leading and then living it out in your life. It's very informal so please do join us at 7.30. And then on nine, at 9am 9 on Saturday we meet for prayer. We would love you to join us. All of the links for these will be on our Facebook page. On Saturday from 12 noon to 1pm in number one is our care and share. Finally, it is with sadness that I announce a death in our congregation with the death of Mr Ken Black. 
to the Black Family Circle, we as a congregation extend our deepest sympathy and assure them of our prayers and our love during these days. These are all of the announcements. Stay safe, stay well, stay close to loved ones, look after yourself and guard your mental well-being. God bless you in the days of this new week. Thank you. Let us worship God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. O oh, sing praises to the Lord. O oh, God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The Lord gives strength and power to his people. Let us unite together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we cast our anxieties on you knowing that you care for us. Send your Spirit to open our hearts, to settle our minds, to grant us discernment. And may your living word come alive in us. Glory be to you, O Lord, Most High. Amen. We join our voices together in praising God using the words of the hymn 529. Let us praise God. come before God with our prayers of confession. Let us confess our sin to God now and seek his pardon. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we humble ourselves before you. The burden of our sin is too heavy to carry and too big for us to hide. We rejoice in your promise of mercy and forgiveness. Hear us as we name that which we no longer want to have dominion over us. Hear us and set us free. 
through Christ our Lord. Lord, we know that you pray and that your followers will be one as you and the Father are one. Yet, O God, we confess that often we divide into factions. Sometimes we even demonize those with whom we disagree and fail to show the world that we are yours through our love and respect for one another. We are called to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth, revealing your mercy and grace and hope, and enacting your compassion. But Father, so often we keep silent when we should speak. And then at times we speak when we really ought to remain silent. Forgive us for our failure to take risks for your sake. Grant us your grace and courage to share it, forgiving others as we ourselves have been forgiven. These things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We turn now to the Word of God found in the New Testament in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. It will be read for us today by Peter Shepherd. This morning's reading is taken from Acts chapter 4, reading verses 23 to 33. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage? and the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. Thank you, Peter. May God bless to us this reading from his word, and to his name be glory and praise for ever and ever. Amen. Well, good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I hope you're well. We're at the letter T in our alphabet journey on what is God like 
Words describing what God is like. And we're at the letter T. Well, now, I'm going to pause at T and we'll, we'll look at T a little later on. This morning, I want to share with you boys and girls a true story. But I'll come on to that in a moment. Last week, and I'm sure you've heard this in the news, was Mental Health Week. And Mental Health Week is there to remind us all to look after our own mental well-being. And Mental Health, boys and girls, is all about how we are feeling at times. Because there are some times that we can feel a wee bit lonely. Sometimes we, we, we can feel a bit fed up. Sometimes we, we get a little moody or a little angry and we're just not at ourselves. We miss our friends, don't we? We miss our family. And at times our, our, our mood is difficult to control. We can get angry and disappointed. And that's all to do with mental health. And you know, boys and girls and Young people and men and women, we've got to look after ourselves. Sometimes listening to music can help, playing our favourite playlists. Sometimes it can help by drawing or painting. That can help too. Or taking up a hobby that we really enjoy. But it's also very important that we talk about how we are really feeling and talk to others who care for us. And you know, boys and girls, adults can feel low too. And they can feel fed up just the same as you can. All of us need to look after ourselves, to be nice to ourselves, and nice to each other. Now, I said I was going to tell you a story, and I'm going to preface it by telling you that, and you know this already, that I, one of the things that I really like to do is spotting birds, bird watching. And I would recommend that to you if you have a garden, or even if, you're, if you haven't got a garden, you're able to look outside, see how many birds you can spot. And if you go onto the internet to the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, they have a great resource to help you identify garden birds or sea birds or all kinds of birds. It's a great resource. And bird watching is really great fun. The way I do it, I get a pen and a piece of paper and I make a list of all the birds that I've seen. And I've got hundreds in my book now. But the bird I want to talk to you about this morning is a magpie. The magpie, he's black and white. You'll see a picture of him just now. The magpie is one of our most familiar birds. Magpies, boys and girls, are fascinating birds. In fact, they belong to the crow family. They're, if you like, they're, they're, they're small crows. Now, some people don't like magpies because magpies can kill smaller birds. But boys and girls, I have to say the experts in the RSBB tell us that that doesn't happen very often. And magpies often get the, a bad press because of it. Magpies also remember faces. And would you believe it, a magpie can hold a grudge. But it can also befriend humans, patient enough to respect them and give them a few tasty morsels from time to time. A key reason why friendships with magpies are possible is that magpies are able to recognise human faces, people that have helped them or fed them in the past. And they quickly learn that those people don't pose a risk to them. But equally, if a magpie, if somebody's nasty with a magpie, the magpie can remember that person's face as well, and they're wary of them. Magpies live for something like, oh, just over three and a half years. Now, at the start, I said I was going to tell you a story, and it's a true story. We have a magpie at the manse who sadly lost his partner earlier this year. And this magpie has befriended us. 
In the morning, he comes to our bedroom window and taps the window. And then in the afternoon, he often comes and sits outside my study window. And if I don't pay attention to him or look round at him, he taps the window to get my attention. And then he flies down uh, to the, uh, the, the lower floor of the manse where Linda's study is. And if she's busy working in her study and not paying attention, looking at him, he taps the window uh, and chirps at, at her as well. Friendships have developed with the magpie. Fascinating birds. You know, birds are really wonderful. And that magpie reminds me that we need friendship as well. We need to build on our friendship. It's important that we keep our friends and continue to make friends. During this time when we're separate from our friends, it's good to contact them with the help of our parents, perhaps through social media. It's good for us to think about them and to look forward when we can go out and play together in the future. All of us, boys and girls and men and women, must look after ourselves, our own mental health. And when we feel a bit low, a bit moody, can I say to you, talk to someone. Talk to your mum or dad. Talk to your granny or granda. Talk to friends. Young people, talk to each other. Talk to your parents. Adults, talk to your friends. Speak to people. Speak with me. But don't face this alone. And boys and girls and young people and men and women, I want to also remind you that God is very near. He is so strong. He is so mighty. There's nothing that God can't do. And God will help us at this time. When we feel a bit fed up, when we're tired of being in all the time, God is near. Put your hope in him. Trust him and do not be afraid. We come now to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others. And Linda will lead us in prayer. We've just come to the end of Mental Health Awareness Week. In our prayer of intercession today, we'll think of those who are struggling, especially with mental health issues during lockdown. As we start to ease out of lockdown, we will pray for those returning to work, those who are feeling uncertain about their jobs and their future, those facing unemployment and just not knowing what the future holds. So let's pray together. Father God, Today we bring to you those who are facing distress and discomfort in life, struggling with their mental health. We pray for children who struggle with being away from school, missing their teachers, friends, routine and the stability that school life offers. We pray for those who feel stress at home, who are afraid, who are isolated and lonely. Lord, we ask today that you will surround these children with your protection and provide someone for them to talk to, a family member, a friend, school's counsellor, or someone from their church. Father, we know that lockdown is proving difficult for teenagers and their parents, having to stay in and not visit friends or meet up. Doing schoolwork at home can be quite difficult. Maybe having to share a computer with other family members, or face the embarrassment with friends of not having one. Lord, we know the difficulties each young person is facing and we pray that you will help them to be patient and find someone to rely on. Father, lockdown is a surreal experience for each of us <clears throat> and we have no reference point. This has never happened before. This is new <clears throat> and something we have been adapting to for the last few weeks. We pray today for those who feel isolated, lonely, cut off from friends and colleagues, who are struggling to work at home and balance childcare and homeschooling. We pray today for those who feel mentally low, on the brink of suicide, 
Help them to call someone today and talk about how they feel. We pray for those who work in the area of mental health, for psychiatrists, psychologists, counsellors, psychiatric nurses and many others who treat and support. Lord, we pray for them <clears throat> as they work by phone and video calls. Help them to be empathic and understanding, to have compassion with their clients. Lord, we pray for those who are putting their lives in danger for us every day, in hospitals, health centres, shops. We remember council workers, funeral directors, grave diggers, ministers and many others who need your protection today. Father, we bring to you families who have lost loved ones in recent weeks and the stress is caused by not being able to meet up, shake hands or share a supportive hug. Lord, we pray especially today for the black family in our congregation that they may know your comfort and peace at this time. We also pray for families known to us who are grieving the loss of someone they love. May they be strengthened by knowing that you are beside them each day. Let's take a few minutes now to pray for those known to us who most need you today. Father we know that you listen to our prayers and ask that you will be close to all who need you today. In your name we pray. Amen. Over the last three weeks, we have been considering together the abundance of God, the abundance which our Heavenly Father has provided for each of us. Indeed, one of the pillars of Christianity is the recognition that God has abundantly provided for all of his creation. And you know, this idea of abundance is radical in a culture which, which constantly asks if there is enough for everyone. God provides as he promised he would in his word. He provides for us from the bounty of the created world. He provides for us mentally and spiritually through the abundance of his grace, which covers and extinguishes our sin and, and makes us right with himself, thus transforming us to be his people, the sheep of his pasture. God also provides for our future. In him our hope is found. All other ground gives way. Christ is our anchor and our rock, our sure and steadfast hope. So then celebrating the abundance of God takes the focus of ourselves and our needs and places it where it belongs, on God. So today, as we continue to explore the abundance of God, we need to ask the question, what is our personal response to all of this abundance, creation, grace, hope? Do we simply take it all for granted? Do we simply say, thank you, lift it, and then go on about our business? Or do we as adults have a responsibility with all of this wonderful abundance? When God created mankind, he, out of his, out of his own desire, formed a, a covenant with them. God said, you shall be my people and I shall be your God. Genesis 17 verse 7, we read these words. God is establishing his covenant with his people through Abraham. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And again we read in Psalm 111 verse 9, He, that is God, he provided redemption for his people. He 
ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. You and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, are in relationship with God. We know him as our Father. Indeed, Jesus taught us to to pray, and we prayed earlier, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In every relationship, in every relationship comes responsibility. And it's to this area of responsibility I want us to turn today. You and I have been blessed out of the sheer abundance of God in the created world around us. The blue sky above us and the earth beneath our feet. The beauty of flower and shrub and tree. Animals, domestic and wild. God provides food for us to eat and water to sustain us. We have been blessed by grace given to us through Christ our Lord. And at our end, we are blessed by the hope, the sure and certain hope of eternal life. The great reuniting with our loved ones in the heavenly realms. God our Father provides for us abundantly. What's our response to all of this? Let me put it another way. What is our responsibility as ambassadors of Christ? You see, with responsibility comes the willingness to respond. We are able to respond responsibility. But the question is, do we? And how do we respond to this abundance we receive from God? Let's turn to God's word as we find it in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 33, which Peter read for us earlier. Verse 32 says, All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. Verse 33, With great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. Here we see that the earliest Christians in Acts were able to live in a community precisely because they were, they, they were confident in God's abundance. There would be enough to go around. They were of one heart and one mind. The unity that Jesus had prayed for, the great power and and much grace with which the Spirit had infused them was being abundantly expressed, excuse me, abundantly expressed in their immediate and practical concern for one another. As the church continued to grow and expand, The Christians, ambassadors for Christ, displayed unselfish attitudes towards material possessions. This behaviour continued to permeate through the, the, the total Christian community. When Luke, the the author of the Acts of the Apostles, when Luke recorded that people shared everything they had, he did not mean to imply that that everyone simply sold everything and put it in to the total proceeds into some sort of common church fund. That's not what's going on here. You see, Luke clarified this statement when he said there were no needy persons among them. Now, people didn't sell everything and give everything to the church. But they did give generously to the church. 
and they gave out of their material well-being, out of the blessings that, that God had bestowed them. They wanted to give something back to God. And verse 34, Luke tells us from time to time, those who owned lands or, or houses and who were in a position to do so sold them to provide for the church. As the needs of people became obvious, people who could, who could, that's important, and desired to do so, responded by liquidating property in order to provide money to meet people's needs. This giving, you see, was a voluntary system, which, when you think about it, must have impacted the God-fearing, but non-Christian Jews, who were more accustomed to a rather rigid and legalistic approach to giving. The believers shared their material possessions out of hearts of love. Both because of their commitment to Jesus Christ and because of the need that was around them. And you know, in the church of today, we are called to exercise the same stewardship of our time, talents and money to the work of the Christian church here in Joymount and further afield. We do so each Sunday by giving an offering. We call it a, a free will offering. This is something we do in response to the abundance God has provided for us. Now let me say there are seasons in life when all of us, and I'm sure there are some of our church members are in this season at the moment, when we, we may not be able to give as much as we would like to give. Particularly, I would say, at the moment, those who are self-employed and who are not, able, are not in a position to get government aid. However, others still can give. And giving now to the church, because we're not meeting on a Sunday, giving now to the church has become a challenge for us to overcome. Last week we, we sent out a leaflet outlining different ways that you might want to give financially to our church. The best way is through online banking. And if you're used to online banking, then it's very easy to transfer money over to the church account. And you can do so uh, uh, to get information from Hillary at the church office. Another way of doing it, of course, is setting up a standing order. And that can be changed at, at any stage. But that's another easy way of doing it. Another way still is to send a cheque via post to the church office. We wouldn't recommend that you would send any money, any cash, uh, either coins or paper money in the post. We wouldn't recommend that. Uh, please do not do that. If you want to give cash, hold on to the money uh, or indeed uh, pass it. Let your dis district elder know and arrangements can be made uh, for it to be uh, sorted for you. Yes, the leaflet we sent out provides various ways to help you and help Joymount during this time of crisis. Now, I know there are people who listen to the service from overseas and who have indicated their desire to make a contribution. You may do so by contacting the church office. Details can be found on our church website or Facebook page. At home, if you haven't got access to the internet, then contact your district elder and he or she will be able to help. Here in Acts chapter 4, the early church members shared their material possessions from hearts of love because of their commitment to Jesus Christ. 
They experienced in Christ the abundance of Almighty God who provided for them, who who covered their sin with grace and who provided that sure and, and certain hope of eternal life, that reuniting with our loved ones who have gone on before us in the way of faith. And in response to all of this, they gave freely to God from their material well-being. And what do we see? Well, we see that power was released through them. Lives were changed. Reconciliations happened. Healings happened. And joy. These were evidenced of the church that was alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us about an essential ingredient of a great church. That is the unlimited commitment to Christ and each other, which is expressed in unrestrained loyalty. Where does your loyalty lie? Just how committed are you to this great, wonderful, awesome, almighty God who provides for each of us so abundantly? And just how is that commitment expressed? The question we must ask ourselves in all honesty is, are you a giver or are you a taker? The early church members shared their material possessions from hearts of love because of their commitment to Christ Jesus and because of the abundance God had bestowed and continued to bestow upon them. Friends, God has given you abundantly. How will you give back to him? Acts chapter 4 verse 32, all believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. They did not give all their wealth away, but shared it and thus provided for the growth of the church. Exploring Christian stewardship within a congregational setting is never easy. It involves inviting members of the church community into ongoing, uh, into the ongoing spiritual practice of self-giving that supports a release from every system that is not love. You see, the spiritual practice of stewardship forms the way we see the world and ourselves within it as people of faith. It also sharpens and hones each virtue on Paul's list of spiritual fruits. You remember what they are? Love, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, in addition to generosity and gratitude. Christian stewardship is our response to the God who provides for us so abundantly. And Christian stewardship calls us to steward, to manage every part of of who we are, not just money. Like all spiritual practices, including prayer or regular worship, stewardship isn't a one-time event or even seasonal. Stewardship and giving financially to the church is an ongoing commitment with endless opportunity for growth, and increased attunement to God's call. 
What's more, the practice is valuable outside of just financial gains. For if we quadruple our church bank accounts but aren't transformed as a community of people who are kinder, gentler, more ready to welcome the stranger, more forgiving, more committed to justice, then we have just practiced a form of fundraising. But we won't find ourselves in the deepest wells of real stewardship where change happens within. The real measuring rod for stewardship is the degree to which the church body looks more and more like the beloved community, the the community of the body of Christ on earth. Stewardship is a practice without an answer or an end. It's our response, our responsibility to the God who provides abundantly. May God, the Holy Spirit, challenge us today so that you may provide for the ongoing work of Christ church on earth and that each of us may indeed be good stewards of the bounty we have received from God and to God be all the glory for ever and ever amen we join our voices together as we sing to the praise of God The hymn 515. Let us praise God. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Can I remind you, uh, sorry, let me try it again.
<laughs> Don't make me laugh. <clears throat> Folks, can I remind you that we are meeting for a cup of coffee through Zoom. Uh, the link is on our Facebook page. Hope to see you in about two or three minutes and we'll have a coffee and a chat together and a bit of a catch up. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye.